Good morning. Good morning. Let me say very briefly that I am very happy to be with you this morning. And uh, I'm very thankful to God for the great work that uh, Father Tony and his staff is doing here at Christ the King and for all of the support you give. Uh, you, you are almost a wonder to the Reformed Episcopal Church in the way that you have grown in such a short time. And my prayer is that the Spirit of the Lord will continually be upon you and that you will grow more and more and, and uh, all of Atlanta will soon know that you are here. So uh, the Lord bless you and keep you in all that you do. Uh, we've had a lot of things going on this morning, and uh, I, I am always uh, amazed that regardless of what happens in the worship service, when I am preaching, it just seems like it doesn't take but a minute to get to me. And here I am, standing at the pulpit. Well, I'm going to do something this morning that um, um, maybe it's not customary to me. I, I'm not going to preach my whole hour and a half. I'm going to cut it down a little bit, uh, but if I, if I happen to look over the congregation and notice that you are napping, I will add 15 more minutes to it. <laughs> so no matter what happens, pretend like you are really alert and paying attention. That way I won't go on and on and on and on. So I'm not going to read them again at this time, but I will refer to them throughout the, the brief message. But uh, I would like to speak to you this morning from the title of the message, Jesus' Promise. Jesus' Promise. Now, uh, last week, you were with me, but last week I preached a message from John chapter 15 and 16. And I drew two main points and three sub-points from that text. Uh, the three sub-points were uh, love, joy, and persecution. The Lord said in the 15th chapter of uh, John, verse 11, uh, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Uh, Jesus was a joyful person. The little children saw the joy in Jesus, and they went to him gladly. He was also a man of love. In John 15, that same chapter, Jesus says, greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. He taught his disciples to love one another, but he went further and demonstrated what the greatest love is like. He laid down his life for his friends. A true godly love must go beyond words. And I think you would agree with that. And lastly, with persecution, Jesus said, they hated me without a cause. And those things bring me to the starting place for our text today. Jesus promised to the church uh, Jesus was about to go back to the Father, and he was sending his disciples into the world to preach the gospel and disciple men. Now, if you can imagine going out into all the areas of Atlanta, and when I say all, I mean all the areas of Atlanta, and to preach the gospel for the first time, it would be easy for you to understand the need of the apostle for the helper whom we will talk about this morning. And when we look at Jesus' promise of, the, of sending the helper to them, I wanted to look at three things. And, and first is the helper is coming in verses 26 and 27. Jesus said, but when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Now, the Lord promised his disciples that he would send them the helper. Uh, this is a, 
a promise of assurance. The helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, he is called by many names, but he is one spirit. And he was coming to help them. They were given a king-sized assignment to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in a hostile world, and they were certainly going to need help. They were given an assignment to carry out that they could not possibly do in their own strength or in their own wisdom. Now, years ago, uh, I read a book by uh, the late uh, General Colin Powell. And Colin Powell said in that book that uh, one of the reasons that he was able to excel in life to the, to the level in which he did was that because he was always given assignments that was bigger than he was. And you know, I, I can understand that because even in my life I've felt at times that, that I've been called to things that were just bigger than me. But you know, that is a good thing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's good to have an assignment that's bigger than you because as a Christian, as a born again believer, it forces you to depend on God to give you the strength and the wisdom to carry you through. And when God has carried you through and given you victory, you know that it wasn't in your own strength and you have to look up and thank God for the help that he has given you. Now, if you'll notice in this verse, in verses uh, 26 and 27 of the text, uh, the helper is coming with the full force of heaven behind him. Jesus said, when the helper comes, whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, he will testify of me. He's gonna have the full force of the triune God behind them, and they will know every step of the way that they were never alone. Today, in this church, I have laid my hands on many of you that were, um, that were confirmed and received into the church. Uh, you have become official members of Christ the King Anglican Church. You have received the blessing that God, of God that will assure you of your place in the kingdom and of this church. And you, like the, whole, the apostles in the early church, will receive the helper to strengthen you and keep you from falling away from the faith. And for that, I say, praise God. Uh, secondly, the spirit of truth at work. Jesus said, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. Now, it is good to know that there is a source of absolute truth in the world today. The third person of the Trinity is called the Spirit of Truth. And to me, it has been interesting to hear some say that the Spirit of Truth is the silent person of the Trinity. And that is partially true, but he does speak. He can speak. He has spoken in the Bible. And I am trusting that as you go on with your Christian life from this day, you will hear him speaking to you. Now, <clears throat> I do not think I should leave here today, uh, I leave you here today, expecting to hear a thunderous voice speaking to you in your family room at home or hear this large voice speaking to you as you are driving along the freeway. God forbid, because that might cause a, a really bad accident. Amen. But he does speak, and I want you to learn to recognize his voice. Today I'm issuing a confirmation certificate to each of you that were confirmed 
and on this certificate, you are encouraged to do five things, and I went over them with you earlier, but I, I want the rest of the church to hear these five things. You are encouraged to pray, to read the Bible, attend church services, give, and serve. Now, those five things are printed on your confirmation certificate. But I'm going to add one more, and if you have your pen, I want you to write it, write it down. Uh, this is from William White. Amen. If you want to hear the voice of the Spirit of God giving you direction and encouragement as you grow in grace, carve out some quiet, quality time to listen to him. Can I get an amen? amen? Sometimes we don't hear him because we are not listening. Jesus says, the Spirit will testify of me. It is the work of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth, to make clear to you who Jesus is. Now, I, I trust that this will not happen to you, but, but I can assure you that after I was converted, there were those times when, when doubt was planted in my mind. And I can think of the very day that the Lord God erased those doubts, and I never doubted again. But I want you to be assured in your mind of who Jesus is. He is the Son of the living God. And just in case you uh, need a reminder, uh, let me say, he is God's only son that was sent into the world to be our savior. He's not one of them. He's not a favorite. He is the only begotten son of God, and he came into this world to make God the Father known to us. And we are redeemed by his blood. And today, you have joined the family of God. And for that, we praise God. Now, <clears throat> the Spirit of God will testify to you who Jesus is and what he does. And I would encourage you to, to find time, a, a quiet place, and learn to listen for the still small voice of God as you familiarize yourself with the word of God. Thirdly and lastly, uh, preparing for the future. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. Now, uh, I'm sure that's your pastor's heart's desire this morning. And that is the desire of your bishop. We do not want you to stumble or fall away from the faith. And I believe standing here this morning, uh, in order to help you not to stumble, we just need to tell you the truth. And Jesus said to his disciples, and they are true to this very day, he says in 16.2, they will put you out of the synagogue, yes, the time is coming that whoever killed you will think he offered God service. And these things will they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Now, <clears throat> looking at this large number of new members united with this church today, it is evident that the Spirit of the Lord is at work among you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, it will be a, even a greater sense of evidence of his work in you if the bishop stands here next year and you are seated there worshiping and having grown in the Lord for a year. Amen. Now, if you are here next year, uh, at this time, living and growing after your faith, has been tested, and it will be tested. So please don't leave here today thinking, and don't hear me telling you that 
when you leave here today, uh, your world is going to be filled with joy and happiness and prosperity. And all of your trouble will be over. If I stood here today and said that to you, I would be the biggest false prophet in Atlanta this morning. And that I certainly don't want to be. Listen, <clears throat> there's coming a time when your faith is going to be tested. And don't be surprised if when you leave here, a jubilant Christian with the testimony of Jesus on your lips, don't be surprised if the world doesn't love you. But Jesus does. Your pastor does. Your bishop does. And you know without a doubt all of heaven loves you because God gave his only son for you. So I'm saying to you, <clears throat> you that are newly confirmed, new members, expect a little trouble along the way. But rest assured, the helper will be with you for every need that comes in your life. And you will be a source of joy for the Lord, for your bishop, for your rector, for this church, if you do not stumble, if your faith does not fail you. So my prayer is that you'll go stronger and stronger and serve the Lord in this church. Amen.